technical communicators must know how to design information for their audience. Document design is about more than just making the document look good, it's about making the information easier to find and to process, which in turn makes the document easier to use. When deciding how to design your documents, you should consider the concepts of information design. As defined by the Information Design Journal, information design is the art and science of presenting information so that it is understandable and easy to use. In short, effective, efficient, and attractive. Information design is founded on principles, and according to Saul Carliner's article, Physical, Cognitive, and Effective, a three-part framework for information design, these principles work because they address three human needs. First, the physical. Can the user locate the information they want or need? Next is the cognitive. Can the user understand or comprehend the information once they've found it? And finally, the effective. Can the user then use or apply the information to meet their needs? By following the principles of information design, you can create a document that meets the physical, cognitive, and effective criteria. The principles of information design are contrast, alignment, proximity, white space, and repetition. Now let's first take a look at a simple document where none of these principles have been applied. This document has a lot of text, but lacks effective design. The problem here is the information is difficult to find. This document fails the physical criteria Saul Carliner talks about. Let's apply the principles of information design and see what happens. First, we'll apply the principle of contrast. Karen Shriver, author of Dynamics and Document Design, notes in her article, What Technical Communicators Need to Know About Information Design, that the human eye is attracted to areas of high contrast. You can create contrast with changes in text size, color, weight, position, and typeface. In this example, the size and weight of the headings have been increased, and the typeface and position of text changed to indicate a hierarchy of information. In the closing section, the change in text color draws the eye and makes the red text stand out from the surrounding black text. We can see this principle applied in a real-world example on the National Weather Service website. Here we can see the most important text, the title of the page, the name of the city, and the current temperature, is larger and bolder than other text on the page. We can also see the daily highs and lows are contrasted with each other by color. The topics of the page are also separated by a bar of a different color, in this case a light gray, which helps make the structure of the page more explicit. Current conditions, extended forecast, and detailed forecast are each indicated with this visual cue. All of these applications of contrast aid the audience in locating the information they want more quickly. The next principle, alignment, refers to the position of the elements in your document relative to each other. In this example, each heading is aligned left, and each subtopic is indented beneath and aligned with each other. In addition, graphics are aligned with their associated text. In the real-world example of the National Weather Service page, the text for current conditions is carefully aligned, as are the graphics that display the forecast for the days and nights of the coming week. The alignment of this information helps the user identify the relationship between the elements. The next principle, proximity, says related items must be positioned close together. In this example, the information grouped most closely together is related information. You can tell by the close proximity that this text and this graphic are related, and the items in the bullet lists of the table are also related. In our real-world example, the National Weather Service page, the current conditions are grouped together and kept separate from the extended forecast, and both are grouped separately from the detailed forecast. The grouping of current conditions, extended forecast, and detailed forecast further reinforces the relationships of the information within each grouping. Applying these principles will automatically create white space in your document. According to Dr. Elizabeth Tubeau, professor of English at Texas A&M University, and Dr. Sam Draga, former editor-in-chief of IEEE, Transactions on Professional Communication, in their book, The Essentials of Technical Communication, 
white space is essential for readers to keep track of their location in a document. In this example, we have further refined the white space to make specific information easier to locate. Looking back at the National Weather Service page once again, notice the use of white space in each section, which makes key pieces of information, like today's temperature, quickly accessible to the eye. Finally, repetition of an aspect of design creates unity and builds familiarity with this type of information. We can see this principle at work once again on the National Weather Service webpage. The day and night graphics are each the same size and style. The alignment of the related text is the same across the entire section, and the colors for high and low temperatures remain consistent. Note other items of repetition on the page, including what is and isn't bold, the fonts and colors used in the headings, and the repeated gray bars to indicate grouped information. All of these principles work together to make the audience feel like the information makes logical sense. As noted information designer Edward Tufte says, clutter and confusion are failures of design, not attributes of information. As a technical communicator, your job is to make documents that are easily understood and useful. Poor design can lead to misunderstandings, which can lead to a loss of time and money at best, and serious safety risks at worst. Designing your documents according to the principles of information design can help minimize any errors in understanding, no matter what the topic. Finding what design is most effective will take research and experience. There are resources at the end of this video for further study. Thanks for watching.